Father God, we've come to magnify your name and we've come to glorify your name God we thank you God that you bless us God and we thank you God that your spirit and your presence is here continue to rain down on us oh God and continue to allow us to lift up our hands oh God and continue to allow us to clap our hands God and continue to allow us to do our dance and give you the praise and I let the words of my mouth God and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight Oh, Lord God, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. You are my help, God. And you are everything that I need and more. Let this word fall on good soil right now. For Judah has gone forth, oh God, to break up the fallow ground. Judah has come to lift up every herd, hung down head, and every oh God, burden that can be on the people. And so, God, now the word, oh God, is ripe. The hearers are ripe for the word of God. And so let your word, God, fall on good soil, oh Lord. We bind the thickets. We bind the thorns. We bind the thorny ground right now that will try to come in and steal, kill, and to destroy the word of God. But I declare right now that this word will fall on good ground, God, and spring up up light in these your hearers in the mighty name of Jesus God continue to breathe on us oh God continue to continue to rain God continue to shower now God and let your anointing rest in this place and we'll give you glory we give you honor and we give you praise it's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we pray this morning hallelujah 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 let the redeemer of the Lord say so hallelujah glory to your name it's in the mattress and mighty name of Jesus we pray this morning amen and amen Lady McCowan took my song and I didn't know how to get in that's my song you know that's my song I always sing it wrong but I still sing it that's my song and so I thank God for the people of God this morning. Turn quickly with me because I'm excited because God is showing himself mighty in this place. He is showing us that we can go higher and higher every single time we come together because God wants us to do a greater work. And as long as we continue to put this flesh under subjection, God can't help but to take us higher and higher each and every day. And so turn quickly with me to 2 Kings chapter 7. The scripture reading this morning is not very long. and You may have heard this word before. I heard it this week and it inspired me to bring it, bring it here to pray center this morning. 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 7, I mean, excuse me, verses 3 through 4. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3 and verse 4. We all have the scripture. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3. In verse 4. And the Bible reads. I want to get it in here too. And the Bible reads as such. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another. We sit. Why sit we here until we die? If we say we would enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come, and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. If we say we will enter into the city, then the family is in, is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come. Let us do this with one accord and with one mind. Let us come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live and not die. But if they kill us, we're going to die anyway. We're going to die anyway. And so as we continue along in this pilgrimage to Pentecost and our 40-day fast, I am more and more determined to move forward in every area of my life. I don't want to just go higher in ministry, but I want to go high in my trust and my faith in God. I want to go higher in my relationships um, that I have on the outside of the church walls. I, I want to grow my relationship with my family. I want to grow my relationship with my children. I want to grow in the relationships that I have on my job. I want to have a greater anointing everywhere I go. I want to have a greater anointing in my finances. I want to have a greater anointing in my giving. I want to have a greater anointing in my reading of 
the word. I want to have a greater anointing in every area of my life. How I respond to trials and tribulations. How I respond when people bother me and people afflict me. I want to grow higher in every area of my life. And it's my opinion that the time is right now, that it's ripe now for the believers across the world to make a stand for holiness. I want to be holy in all manner of conversation. I want to be holy when I walk. I want to be holy when I talk. I want to be holy when I stand. I want to be holy when I go to sleep. I want to be holy. And I believe it's now time for the believers across this world to stand for holiness. And if there was ever a time for urgency among the believers. The time is now. I don't know if you all have been paying attention to what's going on on in the news, but senseless deaths are occurring on a daily basis. It doesn't matter the age. It can be somebody that's a senior. It could be a a brand new infant. There are people dying daily every single day. And I don't know if you all are paying attention, but immoral laws are being passed on a consistent basis. Never would I ever thought that marijuana would be something that would be legal. Never would I have thought that they would have passed a law uh, to state that a man can marry a man and a woman can marry a woman. But in the times that we're living in, We are living in perilous and evil times. And so they're passing immoral laws, and they're not just doing it in America, but they're doing it everywhere around the world. They're doing it in every single country of the world. They're doing it everywhere that men are leading themselves and not being led by God. And because of the state of the world and because of uh, the things that are going on in the world, Superintendent Kent Bell said on a Friday that the rocks are crying out. He said the rocks are crying out. And so we're having... uh, Uh, earthquakes in diverse places because the world is mourning the state of the people that reside in the world. The rocks are uh, crying out because uh, uh, men are lovers of themselves and not lovers of God. The rocks are crying out because we're living in immoral times. And so since we're living in immoral times, our homes are in disarray. Our schools are no longer a place of safety for our children like they used to be. Marriages are falling at high rates and I'm not even referring to marriages in the world, but marriages in the church are falling at a higher rate than those that are in the world. Um, Relationships are fleeting. We don't have friendships anymore because we're in such a technology generation that we don't know how to communicate directly with one another, another, but we can put something in a text, but we can't say anything to each other. I can tell you I love you over a text, but I can't tell you I love you when I'm face to face with you. We don't have the relationships that we used to. Churches are closing down. The doors of churches are closing everywhere, but it's amazing that casinos are popping up everywhere. Uh, New housing tracks are popping up everywhere, but there's not a place where people can go worship because churches are closing. Uh, uh, I mentioned earlier that that marijuana is legal now. I looked around and it's 25 states and the District of Columbia has legalized the usage of marijuana. We are living in a world that is waxing more and more evil day by day and the world is on a path for destruction but even though the world we see this thing and and we as believers are becoming concerned because the world is waxing more and more evil but it also should take a note to us that it appears that the church is growing more and more weak as the days go by the the church used to be a place of strongholds uh, that were broken strongholds it used to be a place of strength it used to be a place of healing the church used to be a place of deliverance the church used to be when things weren't going right people would run to the church to get an answer to get a solution to hear from God they did it in the beginning of times and they were even doing it as far back as 20 or so years ago but the church is not the same as it used to be prayer is not the focus the focus in church anymore Uh, and I can't say that here at Pray Center because prayer is our focus but the body of Christ is greater than just Pray Center so prayer is not the focus in churches anymore People don't fast anymore. Uh, It's only a few of us that are actually fasting on Tuesday and Friday, as our church does uh, across the world. And so people are not fasting anymore. Fasting has become an option, and and it's no longer a requirement. Faithful attendance is lacking. Yes, I said faithful attendance in a ministry, being invested in a ministry is lacking today. People are okay with shacking up with the church. They're easy. They're they're happy and consistent. We're not having a, a, a relationship with the church, but just 
driving by and going in a fellowship. And I don't know about you, but that is called shacking. When you don't have no ring on the finger or you don't have no investment in the game, then what you're doing is you are shacking with the church. And so people are not faithful in attendance. And no longer is ministry the focus of their lives. I don't know about you, but I enjoy ministry being the focus of my life. Every single time the doors of the church is open, I'm happy to get into the church because nothing else in this world can give me uh, to satisfy the hunger and the thirst that I have for God. And so what's happening is we're not praying and we're not fasting and also we're not reading the word of God. And if we're not reading the word of God, then we're in trouble because the word of God says, David says, says that thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. But if we don't know the word, that means that we're going to be sinning against God. If we don't know the word, and it's often, I mean, it's, it's unique that we should know in that scripture. He says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin. And so if the word is hid in your heart, then it's a possibility that you might not sin. But if the word is not in your heart, then there's a guarantee that sin is going to be knocking at your door and you're going to be sinning against the God of our salvation. And so when we have no prayer in our lives and when we have no uh, have not committed to fasting and when we're not willing to be faithful to God in our service and in our giving, then we find that our lives are in disarray and we find things are not going the way that we uh, desire for them to go. And so uh, then we st try to stand. And so the scripture says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. So because we don't know the word and because we don't take time to fast and because we're not faithful in our attendance and we're not faithful in our sacrifice that we give unto God, then we find ourselves in a spirit of fear. How are you fearing? You're fearing because you're staying up all night and you're worried about things that are outside of your control. Staying up all night won't pay a bill. That bill is going to still be there in the morning. So you might as well get some rest because you can't do nothing about it at nighttime. I had a bill yesterday. I had a bill that I needed to take care of. We had to renew our car, uh, our, our, our car tags and I couldn't get a hold of the tax company because they need to release um, the hold that they have on paying my uh, DMV records. But I didn't stay up and worry about it because I can't do nothing about it until Monday. And so I'm going to keep going about my business until I get to Monday and I can resolve the issue. We're staying up all night allowing things to burden us and to hold us down that we cannot do anything about it. We must understand that it's our God that's here to take care of those things. And so I'm not here to berate you this morning. I'm not here to ridicule anyone. I'm not here to put any down because I may have stepped on a couple of toes as I've given you some of those information or some of those examples, but what I'm here to tell you and to warn you is that today is urgent times. We're living in an urgent day. We're living in an urgent generation, and urgent times, uh, 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 and urgent matters requires urgent attention, and so what I want you all to do is to tell your neighbors this, that I'm not going to go, um, that I'm not going, excuse me, that I ain't going out like that. Tell your neighbor, I ain't going out like that. I ain't going out like that. I, my proper came out, but I wrote it down in, um, in another language. So uh, I'm not going out like that. So if you can't say I ain't, then say I'm not going out like that. That's my message topic this morning is that I'm not going out like that. I won't be before you long, but I never thought that I would see the day that people would prefer to stand for sin and no longer stand for holiness. But we're living in that day and time right now. But this is not a new story, people of God, because in our scripture text today, the people of Israel found themselves in the midst of a, of a siege and in the midst of a great famine. They too were living in a time where men were lovers of themselves and they did which was right in the, their eyes instead of which was right in the eyesight of God. I've never seen the day that people decide um, that church is no longer important, that the relationship with a higher authority is no longer important. Those that know God, those that have proclaimed to have a relationship with God, those those that say that they know God in the pardon of their sins, there is a great falling away and it's occurring right here in the midst of the church. It's not those that are in the world because those that are in the world know of God because they know when you're not doing right and they'll let you know that you are proclaiming to be a believer and you're not doing what's right in the eyesight of God. And so the world knows what's right but it appears that the believers today don't understand the difference between right and wrong. And so 
Israel found themselves in a state of sin. They found themselves in a state of, of siege, in a state of captivity uh, because of the sins that they allowed to come into their lives. This was a nation that decided that they were no longer going to follow after the God of their forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God that made a promise to Abraham that he would be a great man and that he would be a father of many nations. Uh, uh, they have broken the covenant that they had made with between Abraham and between God. This was the nation that God had freed from slavery. Remember that uh, he sent ten plagues into Egypt so that the people would be freed from slavery. And not only did God uh, uh, free them from slavery, but he freed them from slavery and sent them away rich. They, they came out with more than they came in. If you all remember when Joseph brought his brothers to Egypt, they didn't have anything at all. They, they, they entered into Egypt out of a famine and came into a wealthy place. And God allowed them to keep their wealth even though the Egyptians put them in slavery. But he brought them out richer than they could have ever imagined. How is it that slaves, former slaves, can walk around with jewelry uh, upon jewelry and, and gold upon gold and, and diamonds upon diamonds unless it was nobody but God working out in their favor? And so this was the nation that God had freed from slavery and brought them out of captivity. This was the nation that God would lead into their promised land. You all remember that the Egyptians were behind them and the Red Sea was before them and they were caught in the middle. They couldn't go back to the Egyptians because the Egyptians were going to slay them and they could not jump into the river in the Red Sea because the Red Sea would consume them. But God in his infinite mercy, it did not matter that, that what it looked like or could be their end. God worked it all together for their good. And so not only did he part the Red Sea and allow them to walk on dry ground, but he consumed the enemy that was chasing him in the midst of their freedom. So that's just a reminder to let us know that when God frees us from a situation, that freedom is a trap for the enemy that has been there to try to ensnare you and try to defeat you. I'm excited and let me slow down a little bit. And so the nation, this nation that God had uh, let into their promised land, this also was the nation that he maintained the covenant with even though they had broken the covenant of Abraham. Israel was the apple of God's eye. But for some reason, this nation that God had blessed over and over again and over and over again and over and over again had decided that they were going to turn their backs on God. And America is a nation that has founded upon the principles of God. They said on their on their money, if you pull out a dollar or a 20 or a 10 or a 100, because I know some big timers may have a 100. Sister Miller, you got a 100 in your purse? I'm, you should not today? Just not today. If you look on your money, it says, in God we trust. They, they proclaim it um, um, on courthouses. They have in God we trust. But this nation no longer trusts in the God of their forefathers. Yes, their forefathers wasn't altogether complete. But none of us uh, are, are, are free of sin because the Bible says, for we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But this nation, just like our nation, had given themselves over from following and serving God to becoming a nation of idol worshipers. A nation of hate mongers, a nation, a nation that sin, that loves sin, and they have become an uh, unholy people, un, uh, an unholy people. They've turned away from the light that God had given them and have now rested themselves in the midst of darkness. And so uh, sin had caused of uh, God's hedge to be removed from this nation that God had done so many wonderful things for. But I want you all to know that even when we sin, God is not too far from us if we come confess our sins. God is faithful enough to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And so when the nation of Israel should have been consumed because the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. That means that when I sin, I deserve to die. When I do wrong against God, I deserve to lose my life. But it didn't end there. The scripture goes on to say, but the gift of God is eternal life. And so no matter when we fall short or how far we may fall, the gift of life is there if we're able to put our mouths together and to confess that Jesus is Lord and ask him to forgive us of our sins. And so we can't look down upon the children of Israel at this time um, because if we're honest with ourselves, we too have fallen short of God's glory. We too have come, uh, 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 
have not surrendered to him totally. We, too, have not done all that we can do to be to allow God to be the God of our lives. And there's so many ways that we can be led astray. For the children of Israel, they had been led astray uh, because of uh, their forefathers. Um, King Ahab, you all have heard of King Ahab before. He was uh, 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 one of the, uh, the kings of Israel, and he was wicked in the eyesight of God. Uh, he was wicked in the eyesight of God because he did everything uh, that he could to do contrary to what God had commanded him to do. He brought idols into the, t- into the temple uh, t- instead of being a place of sanctification or a place of holiness. He brought in those things that are carnal. We bring in things that are un- unholy and carnal into the church today. This house is a place of deliverance. This his house is a place of healing. This house is a place of joy and a place of worship but we come in and we desecrate the house we come in and we chew gum in the house we come in and we run around in the house we come in and we play games and why instead of listening to the preacher or participating in worship we come in and desecrate the house of God as well and so they desecrated the house of God and and Ahab was the chief among them Ahab and his queen Jezebel the one who wanted to do whatever she felt like doing and the one who tortured the men uh, of the prophets of God. They had fallen short of God's glory, and so they did just like we do. We spend so much time on things that don't benefit us. It's amazing that we're living in a generation that does not want to uh, lose or waste any time, but we waste so much time that we miss that we're wasting so much time. And so we need to get ourselves together. We're, we wonder why uh, 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 I, we don't have the strength that we used to have or we don't have the anointing that we used to have, but I rebuke that spirit right now in the mighty name of Jesus that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And the God that strengthened my forefathers is a God that can strengthen us today. We don't have to settle for anything less. And I'm determined today that I'm not going out like that. I'm not allowing the world to dictate who I am. And I'm not going to let my life dictate how I serve God. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that God is the head and not the tail of my life. It's amazing that in spite of our sin God is still so amazing he doesn't turn our back his backs on us and so every single time that we may fall we have another chance to get things back together again and another chance is all we need another opportunity to say thank you Jesus I love you Lord today and this is the chance that uh, the lepers needed in our scripture today for the king even though the land was under siege um, uh, the lepers like we are are outcasts living in a nation uh, that should be receptive of us Uh, The Bible tells us that we are the salt of the earth. And if the salt has lost its savior, where which shall it be salted? It should be thrown out. The world, I mean, the Bible also tells us that we are the light of the world. So the world needs us in the world. But just as these lepers were, we are outcasts in a nation that should love us, that shouldn't turn their backs on us, that needs something from us. We are just like these lepers. And these lepers, they they had determined in their mind in verse 3 that they weren't going going to go out like that. They decided that uh, even though their situation deemed for them to be outcast and their situation deemed for them to be scourged of the people, they determined that they weren't going to live like that. And the people behind them, uh, they were in a famine. That was those that were in Samaria, the nation of Israel. They were besieged by the Syrians because uh, uh, they were not doing what was right in the eyesight of God. And anytime we find ourselves outside of the will of God, we will find ourselves besieged by the world. Because that means the devil has free reign and free target at us. But I want you to know that if you're in the will of God, that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. I'm telling you today, if you're in the will of God, God won't put no more on you than you can bear. He'll keep a a hedge or protection around you. And what he'll do is he allows things that will come into your life to take you higher. It's his determination to make sure that you don't remain uh, uh, stagnant because stagnant brings about death. But he wants us to continue to move forward and continue to press forward and higher in him and so these lepers they were determined not to die now understand that this 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 uh, disease of leprosy was something that was detrimental um, the bible has a whole book or a whole couple of chapters talking about how to deal with lepers um, but these lepers they didn't have a right to be around people 
They didn't have a right to be in the midst of the city. When they walked around people, they had to say unholy, unclean, unclean. And they had to walk across the street to another side. And so they were a social outcast. They were people nobody wanted to be around. And so they found themselves on the outskirts of the city in between the Syrians and in between the nation that had forsaken them. Now the Syrians, they didn't really care about them because they wanted to overcome um, the city. And so um, in spite of what was going on, they had determined in their minds that they were not going to die in that situation. And I need us to understand today that we should not allow sin to cause death in our lives in any area of our lives. If something is going wrong in your life, I'm here to let you know you don't have to go out like that. You don't have to allow the devil to run all through your family. You don't have to allow the devil to run all through your finances. You don't have to allow the devil to run you up out of any place that you need to be because we serve the God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think but it's according to the power that works within us and so these lepers had a power that worked in them that caused them not to ever give up and in 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 the Bible says be ye steadfast and unmovable always about the work of the Lord knowing that your labor is not in vain and so if you're in the will of God and you're doing everything that God has instructed you to do you need to know that it's going to work out in your favor and you don't have to give up like that and so the lepers decided that even though friends had abandoned them even though family had turned their backs on them even though the nations had discarded them they understood that their God was able to do just what he said that he was going to do and so in the midst of trials I want to encourage you all today in the midst of your trials you need to face your trials you need to look at your trials and let the trials know that I'm not going out like that I'm not going to be defeated because my God is able to take me above you and carry me past you and take me over you and God is able to do just that. The prodigal son had that same testimony. The prodigal son said this. He says, why should I die in this land when I can go back into my father's house and to be someone great? I can be a slave and I can live better than I'm living right now. He was determined even though sin had put him in the place that he was in, uh, he understood that he didn't have to stay in the sin that he was able to go back and repent to his father and his father would bless him at least to be a slave but I want you to know when you repent God doesn't just allow you to still be a slave but what he does he washes you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet to make you whole and to make you right and to restore you back into the place that you had left and so God doesn't just leave us out there the same the three Hebrew boys had the same testimony they decided they weren't going to go out like that they decided Decided that the fire was going to be hot, but they knew that the God that they served was going to be able to, um, to save them if it was his will to do that. But I want you to know the Bible tells us this, that when we, we pray, we can have this confidence knowing that he hears us. And if we have the confidence knowing that he hears us, then we should believe that he's going to do just, just what we said uh, that he would be able to do. And so we have to trust God and understand that we don't have to settle for anything less. And as I come to my conclusion, because I'm not a long-winded pastor. I may not have been saved from a fiery furnace. I may not have been healed from leprosy. That may not have been my testimony. I may not have uh, had to go back to my father and to repent, but the trials and the tribulations that I've had in my life today, uh, they have not taken me out and they have not consumed me like they thought that they would. But this morning, I stand before you to declare that I'm not going out like that. I have been justified by faith. And because Jesus Jesus paid the price for me on Calvary. I now have peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so no longer am I at battle with God. Anytime I'm fighting against God, that means that I'm losing a battle that I cannot win. Anytime that I'm not surrendering to God, that means I don't have the Savior that's able to come and to keep me and present me faultless before his throne. And so there was no longer a battle. There was no longer a war because Jesus came and he paid the price for sin. When I was deep in sin far from the peaceful shore it was Jesus that came and saved me and it was Jesus that came and took me in and so no longer is sin the head of my life but now Jesus is the head of my life and now I have peace with him 
I have peace with God. I don't have to worry. That, and this peace means uh, that uh, Jesus, he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me and reminds me that I belong to him and that I am his home. And so since I belong to God, I don't have to worry no more because I have been now been set free. My sins have been forgiven and I'm no longer bound. Even though the devil is trying to stop me, he can't stop me from going higher in God. Every attack that he tries to bring my way is on a day and an attack that's going to take me higher and higher in the Lord. I know that God won't put no more on me than I can bear. And so I can put my trust in him because God knows me inside and out. He knows the thoughts that he thinks towards me. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give me an expected end. He knows when I'm weak because he makes me stronger. And so I understand this today that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches up in glory. And because I know who my redeemer is, I don't have to go out like that. For God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give me an expected end. That means my end is determined. I don't have to go out just any old way, but my end is determined because my life is in the hands of God. Nothing occurs in my life by happenstance today, but God knows my ending from my beginning. He knows the way that I should go. He's in control of my life. And since he's in control of my life, I'm not going to go out like that today. I'm going to allow him to lead me and guide me. I'm going to allow him to keep me and present me faultless. I'm going to allow him to be the hedge around me and protect me. I'm going to allow him to take me higher no matter what's going on in my life. He's trying to come and destroy my message, I mean my marriage, but I'm not going out like that. He's trying to come and steal my children, but I'm not going out like that. He's trying to come in and take away my finances, but I'm not going out like that. I've been saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost so I don't have to go out like that. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm not going out like that. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world so I'm not going out like that. Though he slay me yet will I trust him because I'm not going out like that. The lepers decided that they weren't going out like that. They decided that they weren't going to give up in spite of what was going on in front of them and what was going on behind them. And it's important for us to, as believers to get a sense of urgency, to understand that today is the time and the hour that we must be about our father's business. We must be about our father's business. Too many of us are, 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 are happy and content with letting the day go by. But I remember the song says this. What is that song? It says, um, it, it, it pretty much said, tomorrow's not promised. And since tomorrow's not promised, uh, I, I'm going to make life today like it may be my last time. I don't know. I'm, that's not the song that's in my head or that I thought I had written down. But uh, I'm not going to go like today, tomorrow's promised. Because tomorrow is not promised to any of us. From the youngest, which may be my son, to the oldest, uh, which may be Mother McCallum, tomorrow is not promised. It's not a guarantee. It's not a given. And so since it's not a promise, it's not a given, then we must act like today is our last time. That means we got to go all out for Christ. That means we have to go all in for Christ. That means we have to do everything that we need to do to make sure our lives are in God's hands. So that means that we don't settle for anything. That means we don't, we're not just content with anything. Anything. That means we're not just happy with anything that's going on or satisfied with things that are weak or strong or, or not strong amongst us. But we are the head. We are not the tail. The Bible says we are the lender and not the borrower. The Bible says that we are great because of him that's in us. So that means that anything that comes our way is subject to the name of Jesus. We have the name of Jesus that takes us and gives us authority over even the greatest enemy that may stand before us. We don't have to go out like we don't have to settle for anything. The lepers decided that they were going to live and not die. They said, why sit here we and die when there is help along the way? It has to be. And so this for you is that I said it and I didn't go into it a little bit further, but we need to face our obstacles. We need to face our trials. What I do sometimes is I throw things away. We got some bills. I got a stack of bills that are piling up. But today when I get home, I'm going to open them things up and I'm just going to look at them. 
and I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay them out before the Lord and say, God, I need you to provide. Putting them to the side don't mean nothing if you're not facing your fear and facing your trial and facing whatever it is that has hurt you or caused you harm or that is there to try to put you under subjection or here to bind you. Don't allow yourself to go out like that because you are great in God and you have served a God that has a cattle upon thousands upon thousands of hills. We have a God that's able to do everything that we need him to do and more. So don't go out like that. But stand. Look at that enemy. Let him know that for God I live and for God I die. Let him know that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Let him know that I'm not going to die because God tells me that I can live. And if I give myself away to him and I surrender my life to him, the scripture says that I gain my life. But when I try to keep my life, when I try to maintain my life, then the Bible tells me that I will lose my life. Resting on your feet in the presence of the Lord. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. I ain't going out like that. It's a term of indignation. It's a term of, I would say even frustration, that enough is enough. I don't know if you all are familiar with um, the cartoon Popeye. But once Popeye got frustrated, he would say, I, I can stand all I can stand and I can't stand no more. That means that I'm tired of the devil whooping me. I'm tired of him having control in my family. I'm tired of him dictating what I do in my finances. I've done all. I, I, I can't stand no more. I've done all I can and I can't stand no more. I'm not going to allow that to happen. I'm not going out like that. And so he had a righteous indignation in him that says enough is enough. And that's what we need to have today is that enough is enough. We're fasting. We're praying. And we should look for God to take us higher and higher every day. Being satisfied with just going throughout the day is not satisfactory enough. But we got to be determined in our heart that, God, I want to go higher in you. Not just in words, not just in deeds, but in actions in every area of my life. God, I want to go higher in you. So I ain't going to go out like that, Lord. I'm going to go out to victor. I'm going to go out to winner. And that's what these lepers did. They ended up facing their, their obstacles that came their way. And they came upon an abundance of wealth because God had already fought the battle. I'm here to tell you all today, you don't have to go like that, out like that because God has already fought the battle. The victory is already won. God has already given you the victory over everything and every obstacle that has come your way. God has already given you the victory. So you don't have to die. You don't have to sit in your current state and die. But live, God tells you. I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. You shall live and not die. He's already spoken life into your situation. So get that right, righteous indignation in you even right now. And tell the, the enemy that I'm not going out like that. Tell him now, I'm not going out like that. I'm not going out like that. You can do all that you want to do, devil, but I'm not going out like that. You can take all the finances you want to take, but I'm not going out like that. You can afflict my body any way you think you may need to afflict me, but I'm not going out like that because God is still in control. My God is still in control, and he won't put no more on me than I can bear. My God is awesome. My God is mighty. My God is who has his hand on me, and I'm not going out the way that you think that I'm going. But I'm going to go out with my head held high, looking unto God, who is the author and the finisher of my faith. My God, who sits high and looks low. And so, Father, we thank you to this day. We thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for another day that you've made. And we thank you for a promise, God, that we don't have to go out like this. 
the, the, the lepers, they determined in their minds that they weren't going to just sit there and die, but they were going to put their faith in action. Help us, God, to put our faith in action in the mighty name of Jesus because we walk by faith and not by sight. Behind them was death, before them was death, but they walked by faith and not by sight. And as they walked in faith, God, you open up a way, God, that the Syrians who were carrying jewels, who were carrying food in abundance, God, who were carrying everything that they needed for life, God, they left it there as you wiped out the Syrians before them. God, do it for your glory, God, in our lives as well, God. Help us to walk in your anointing and walk in authority that you place in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to walk with our head held high. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, God. Help us to understand that we are victors, God, that we are victors, God, that we have the victory, God, and it shall be ours no matter what it may look like. Stir up a righteous indignation in us, God. And help us declare that we ain't going out like that. I ain't going out like that. Because my God, who sits high and looks low, is able to do everything that I need him to do. So my trust and my faith and my hope is in him. Men may go astray. Nations may go astray. But God, I'm going to be a part of that remnant that continues to trust in you and continue to stand upon the message and the principles of holiness and holy and righteous living. Let this word, God, fall on good grounds, Lord, and let it encourage the hearts of those that have heard the word. God, I've given you, given the people what you have given for me to give them, God. I've given them all that you gave me to give to them, God. And so, God, you have to do the work, God. You have to create the breakthrough, God. You have to loose the shackles. You have to loose the ties that cause them not to walk in the anointing and the favor, God, that you have already placed on them on their lives. Remind them who they belong to, God. Let them know, God, that they belong to you, that they are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, God. They are a peculiar people, God. They are the lights of the world, God. And so let them stand, oh God, and be the lights that you have deemed for them to be and let your glory be revealed in our lives continue to work your work in us and help us to stand upon your promises hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against thee that the world may not overtake us that we may live victorious and peaceful lives bless us now in jesus name amen and amen turn to your neighbor and tell him i ain't going out like that Turn back to somebody else that you ain't told it to and tell them, I'm not going out like that. I ain't going out like that. You may be seated as we conclude our service this morning. For those that are tuning into our stream, we thank you for taking time out to join us here at Praise Center. And we pray that you have been encouraged by the word of God today. You don't have to go into defeat. You don't have to settle for less. But God says that you are the head and not the tail. You are the lender and not the borrower. He tells us that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So everything that God has for you is for you. Be encouraged today. And we encourage you to be a blessing to this ministry here at Praise Center by clicking on that Givelify button uh, to, to give us a